Good morning. I can't hear you, but I will be able to hear you later. Sorry for the early one. Just had a, have a, quite a few things going on today, so I thought I'd get this out of the way early rather than us leaving it to a wine o'clock. And it's parents' evening today, so we can't do that. How are we all? Good morning to B. Stiber, Fiona Reed, Lynn Sheard, Clodagh Egan, Ellery Jones. I've seen you all dibbling around as I've just been getting stuff ready here to see you dibbling around. Uh, morning, Julie Everts, Lynn Sheard, as I've just said, Brenda M, Dawn Clary Coates, Faith Goodman, Kirsty, Jessica Faithful, Sarah Fox. God, it's so nice to have you all here. Um, uh, a, a bunch of cards are going out this morning. A bunch of cards going out this morning, which is nice. Um, we are, I think we're now over a third of the way through all the 24 month cards. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, morning, Muriel Roberts, uh, Julie, Julie Neary, I may have said you said that before, Christine, Christina Olivia, Stuart G, Butterfly Bell, Sinead O'Regan, hi from Ireland, lots of fans, got lots of followers in Ireland, can't wait to come to Ireland, someone just messaged me saying, just watched your couple in Berlin, love it, can you do more like it? Well, funnily enough, there is going to be stuff more like that coming later this year, yeah, a little kind of couple -y kind of things. Um, Morning, Kim Linstead. Good morning. Yeah, it's a nice, nice early one, bright and early, 8.45, before the birds are even up. Um, how are we all? How is everyone? How, how, how are things going? Yesterday, we were going to talk about driverless cars, uh, but, but time ran out. Time was against us. Uh, do we have any drivers in the room? Do we have any drivers? Uh, do we have any drivers? Any drivers in the room? I, the news that I just quickly want to just sort of touch upon this. The news yesterday was that uh, drivers... Uh, driverless cars, if they crash, they're not going to be the responsibility of the driver. Who are they going to be the responsibility of? Um, and how do you have no responsibility, even if the machine, even if the car is just... Do you hear about the police officers that tried to pull over an electric car and it refused to stop at the traffic lights? Yeah. Um... Steph from Mind UK. Hi, it was Insta comment regarding supportive partner. This week we found out we are having our first child and he's over the moon. It's really picked him up and the house is filled with so much. Oh, Steph, sorry, I think I've crashed in mid cross chat. Sorry. Did you see TikTok of self driving uh, car driving away from the police estates? Keely Windle, that's exactly what I'm referring to. Yeah, I did. Um, so this idea is that driverless cars uh, will, if they crash, or if you're in them and they crash, it's not your responsibility. It kind of makes sense because you're not driving the bloody thing. But I wanted to ask you. What is the point? Someone give me a compelling reason as to why we should have driverless or, you know, cars that we don't drive. But why? I, I literally, I, I, before we even got, before I even heard the discussion starting, because apparently part of the discussion is that because you're so not responsible for the vehicle, uh, in the future you're going to be able to do things like go online, watch things on, on TV, but you can't use a phone. I, I don't understand. I'm confused. I need guidance. I need. I need someone to kind of reconstruct my brain. Jordan Stevenson. Uh, technology is amazing, but surely it gets to a point where it gets too far. It just sounds dangerous. So many things go wrong. Just because we can do some things doesn't mean we should do them. Do you know what I mean? Ooh. Ear earmark, Fiona Reed. Yeah, getting that sorted at some point later today. I do not like the idea of driverless cars at all, Bobby Ward. So you can chill out in the back seat, Linda Tyler. Yeah, but get a bus, get a train, get a taxi, go in a mate's car. Can you use a mobile phone in a driverless car? Could you be drunk in a driverless car? That's a really good question, Shivy. That's a really good question. So, um, let me just quickly pull it up because I started with it. I wasn't going to, but I just thought I wanted to talk about it yesterday. Um, so watching TV and self-driving cars will be allowed. Uh, people using self-driving cars will be allowed to watch television on built-in screens under proposed updates to the highway code. Um, the changes will say drivers must be ready to take back control of vehicles when prompted. Rachel Hardman, old people or those who can't drive will have more independence. Okay, so old people, but it does say here that you've got to be prepared and ready to retake, retake control of the car. 
So it's not like you can, you might be in, you know, for whatever reasons, old age or disability or whatever, unable to control the car, but then suddenly you're going to be asked to engage and control it. Um, the first use of self-driving technology is likely to be when traveling at slow speeds on motorways. However, using mobile phones while driving will remain illegal, but watching television won't. I don't know why. I mean, I'm not suggesting for the micro, for the for the type. I mean, that's a very valid point that you make for old people, for people struggling with mobility and what have you. But do we not have a? Is that really why this has been developed? Happy birthday, Belix, Belks one. Is that really why this has been developed for those purposes? I don't, I, don't, I don't really get it. I just don't understand why we need it. Jordan Stevenson, but then if you've been able to re-engage with the car, then watching TV or being on your phone in it should be illegal. Exactly. If it's, if it's a car that can be controlled, uh, Dawn Claricates, people trust planes when they go into autopilot. Yeah, I suppose I, I less trust the fact that autopilot's being used in an airplane than the fact that there's four people, highly trained people in the cockpit, responsible for the autopilot button. Um, Gracia D, I'd rather go on a train or bus, but wish tickets were cheaper. Yeah, I mean, if it's cheap, a major reason would be if the cost of running a driverless car, owning a driverless car, and using a driverless car was less than public transport, then it makes total sense. Then I'm getting more. It's like we're in a bloody sci-fi film. It's a curious one though, isn't it? I just wanted to talk about it yesterday. Um, they also lay out the rules. The highway code says that users of self-driving cars will not be responsible for crashes. Instead, insurance companies, not individuals, will be liable for claims. Well, that means insurance policies are going to go through the roof, doesn't it? They're going to have to make their money somewhere. I can see insurance companies really liking that. Uh, morning, Fiona Reid. Um, What's that? Pixie Petal Jenny. So you would need to be a driver and fit, sober and wake ready to drive. Why? Just why? Sort the public transport system out, way too expensive and in rural areas non-existent. It's that classic thing, isn't it, Pixie Petal, of fixing the symptoms of a problem rather than the cause. I personally think it's bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. I've heard some stupid things, but this seems to be the most back-to-front thinking I've ever heard in my life. Um, Joe McKenna, I do remember in many areas of the country there is no access to public transport. We have one bus a week in our nearest village, and that is an absolute crime and sacrilege. And I agree, there needs to become... I don't necessarily think this is the solution, though, do you? Especially, I'd have thought, driverless cars. Don't drive... Isn't the tech in a driverless car going to work most efficiently on a sort of motorway? where the layout of the motorway, smart motorways are all kind of mapped out. The, you know, on cars now, on some cars, I've driven cars where you get this thing where it tells you which lane to be in, so it reads the road and all that kind of stuff. Country lanes, I mean, taking a sort of hairpin bend in a driverless car. I mean, I would want my driverless car to grind down to five miles an hour to take the corner. Do you know what I mean? Anna Froby, friends of mine has gone with Tesla and it has all the strangest new functions. So weird, I would never, I guess you're saying I would never use it. Bobby Ward, there should be a public vote. I like that, interesting. Um, it's like everything, back to front thinking. Brenda M, you're absolutely right. Uh, Brenda M and Ellery Jones, it's the Queenie's birthday today. She's 96. And if you have a look online, there's a rather beautiful photograph of her with a couple of horses. I think they're almost shire horses. They've got really nice... I love horses with flares. Does anyone else? I think of a shire horse as a horse with flares. I've loved, always loved flares. When I met Nadia, I used to wear the most ridiculous parachute... Uh, parachute. They're kind of like parachute uh, combats. They were so flary. She said I could have been blown away. But anyway... The horses, I love horses with kind of, you know, anyway, there's a beautiful photograph of her in front with her two horses, because she loves her horses. Um, and um, she loved, loves her horses. And there's a sort of soon to be, in, soon to be flowering um, magnolia tree behind her. It's a beautiful photograph. So good. Suffolk punches, are they them? Maybe they are them. They're white horses with flares. Beautiful. Uh, me and Kiki were doing something about evolution, the evolution of the horse, and I was talking about how much I love a shire. I remember years ago uh, riding bareback a shire horse on a beach on the Isle of Skye. I can't explain how petrifying it was. Absolutely petrifying. It was like a 
such an enormous beast charging at such speed. I mean, I don't know how I get my head on. It's a beautiful photo of the Queen, isn't it, Lynn Sheard? It really is. It's, it's quite a stunning, stunning photograph. Please, please do find it. Like if I do all of this stuff, it gets a bit mucky and, and what have you. Um, oh, they were, uh, it's only me. I think they said they were fell ponies. Oh, Claire LC, I'm scared of horses. Yeah, a lot of people are scared of horses, aren't they? I mean, it's, the, it's their back legs, isn't it? I mean, everyone goes, oh, don't walk, don't walk around a bit. Yeah, don't walk around a bit. Did you know that horses used to have toes? Horses used to have toes because they had to walk through swampy terrain. And as the savannas developed and man used them and contorted them to our needs and bent them to our ways, their toes turned into hooves. Kirsty, 96 is a very good age. Well, of course it is her birthday, but who feels, I'm gonna be a bit contentious here because I don't necessarily think this, who feels Prince Harry's kind of snagged the limelight of Queenie's birthday? Tell us your thoughts. Obviously Prince Harry, I, this interview, I thought there was more to this interview. Nadia said, oh, this interview is, is causing all sorts of... Uh, and I said, oh, well, what's happened? He said that he needed to protect her or something, didn't he, in the morning. Um, yeah, that was yesterday morning. We were going to discuss it yesterday. But no, it seems to have, it seems to have built up a head of steam, doesn't it, this interview? Um, Keely Wendell, I never know if you're joking or not, Mark. <laughs> About which bit? Sorry, I don't know. Um, love horses, used to ride as a child every weekend. I like horses. Um, yes, yes, oh, Faith Goodman, yes, look at me, me, me. I think his jibe was for Andrew and Murray. Could be. I mean, a lot of people are saying his jibe is that he wanted to make sure that the right people, he'd met up with, with Nan. It's well known that him and Nan have a special connection. Um, and uh, he, he and she would laugh about stuff. I don't know if you remember. I mean, I think there's some truth to this. There was that strange meme. Do you remember? Was it to do with the Olympics when they were here? where Prince Harry said something and his, his, his nan said something else and they pressed a button or they, they, You know, they have a bit of a rap, they have ra a rapport. They, they get on, they, they, they have a laugh. I love that footage I saw recently, it was quite a while ago where the Queen was so elated about one of her horses winning a race, it was so lovely. Um, but of course, in interview for an American network uh, breakfast show, he said that he wanted, she was in fine fettle she was in good spirits, high spirits, great sense of humour, but he wanted to make sure the right people were around her. What do you think you meant by that? What do you think by that? Let's see some of your comments. Uh, Kirsty, Prince Harry is getting worse. Elizabeth is amazing. She doesn't need protecting and she's protected herself for years. Sarah Fox, no one, can't, no one can take the limelight off our queen only if we let them. Uh, Harry needs to stay quiet. Who's been there for her? Not who's, Who has been there for her? Not him, Bell X1. Um, uh, uh, Brenda M, yes, heard that he said the Queen needs looking out for. Mm. Uh, Minnie Mertz, his words seem to stir the media far more for the worse than good, which is a shame. I, you, I mean, the weird thing is, is that, I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not in for a sort of Harry and Meghan bashing. I mean, I think what, what they do is up to them. And I, I think that the monarchy is, is, is big enough and, and, you know, grown up enough to look after itself. Um, you do wonder to what extent Harry and Meghan are cosseted from all of this, because if he knows, you know, he must know that every time he opens his mouth, it plays badly in the press over here. You'd think that perhaps he just wouldn't want to do it for the sake of it being misinterpreted. I don't think necessarily his intentions are wrong, but sometimes there's a case of just don't say, no, don't say anything. If you've, if you've got nothing positive to say, don't say anything at all. Do you know what I mean about, about a situation? But playing devil's advocate, playing devil's advocate, it is an old, it is an old sort of institution. You know, you only have to look at the institution across the years to know that there's all sorts of weird sort of machinery in place behind the scenes that control things. You only have to watch The Crown, though I know it's fictional, to get a sense that the Queen can't make all her own choices. She's kind of driven by convention and, and precedent and, and, and circumstance. Um, but perhaps, you know, him being of a Facebook, say he's the Facebook generation, maybe he sort of sees through all this shit. Maybe he sees through all of the sort of courtiers and sort of people around her. And he is in there, there's both, but how about this? How about this? Let's play, let's be reasonable. Perhaps they do need to shut up a bit, but at the same time, perhaps he is a grandson who's worried about his nan. Could that be a case? Keely Windle, Harry is doing amazing with Invictus Games, but needs to keep to the positives. I think he was asked about whether he missed print his brother and his father, and he did stick to just the Invictus Games, didn't he? Um, Anna Ma, I think Harry has developed strong protective instincts in his life. 
yeah? Um, don't want it, don't need it. She's the literal queen. She gets the best care without whole old Harry getting involved. I like that. I think we should call her the literal queen. You don't get many literal queens on the planet, and she is a literal queen. Morning, Martina McCown. 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 Um, Ruth Blanford, I agree, Mark. He just loves his nan. Uh, Ellen Bullymore, they're all spoilt brats. To be fair, they're royals. He's the definition of a spoilt brat. Elsa Pop. Ellery Jones, he should have thought of that before he left Britain. I suppose, yes. I suppose he could move. I suppose you could move on with your life and be concerned for your nan. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, I don't know. I think there's, as with all these things in life, I think there's probably a bit of both in there. I think he is in the public realm. He isn't as private as perhaps uh, lots of people would like him to be, given that he's asked for privacy. Has he asked for privacy? I don't know. I think he's asked for a, a lack of certain sort of, um, you know, uh, imposition of kind of, you know, the, the, pub, of the, of the press. I think wanting privacy is one thing, but sort of wanting to be a media person is another. Does it mean is one mutually exclusive to the other? I don't necessarily think so. I think he can pursue whatever it is he wants to pursue. Some people are saying that all of this is about Netflix. And we know what happened to Netflix yesterday. They got absolutely hammered, didn't they, with their first drop in subscribers for 10 years, is it, or something? Um, who thinks it's Netflix driving, driving the story? I think that's almost too obvious a narrative. I think it's too, I think it's too neat and easy a narrative. Elsa Pop, if he's so worried about her, maybe move closer to her. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that is a sentiment, isn't it? It's, it's a very strong sentiment. Uh, Jordan Stevenson, he's seen what's happened to his mum and is protecting his, his family and I think that would only be a natural thing to do. It's only me, the press over here just want him to be silent so they overanalyze everything and create moral outrage about the slightest thing. The presence press want him cancelled because he went against the status quo. I think there's a lot of truth in that. I think there's a lot of truth in that. Donna Clark, Netflix shares down 70%. Do you think Harry can ride to the rescue like Prince Hal in Shakespeare? Do you think he can... Uh, Rescue, I, once again, I don't necessarily think... It's a curious one, isn't it, when you think actually that Harry is in bed with Netflix and Netflix make the crown, which is a fictionalised storytelling of his entire heritage. I'm surprised he doesn't feel there's a conflict of interest there. I only just thought of that connection. Um, Prince Philip documentaries on Amazon Prime, haven't watched it yet, Kirsty. Uh, I think I think a lot is made of not a lot that's said. You know, he's seen his nan. If he said nothing, would that be seen as heartless? Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Sometimes, aren't you? Aren't you? And and sometimes the sticky the sticky web that's 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 spun by the media and trolls and what have you, is that they get you. They try and get you to a place people like him. They try and get people like him to a place where whatever they say can be read and interpreted and presented as, you know, insincere, dubious, suspect, all that kind of stuff. I mean, the point in life is, is that in any situation with anything you say, you can either say one thing or another. You have to make a choice. You know, this sentence, I just decided to use the word sentence. You know, you make a choice about everything. And there are too many people waiting for whichever choice you make to say you should have made the other one. It's very easy to always say you should have made the other one or, you know, to, to bring some sort of prurient sort of intent to something that's been said. So perhaps he was just actually sharing because he's on, you know, he is on the telly, he is a celebrity. Maybe he was just sharing the fact that he's worried about his name. Who knows? But then again, maybe there's a really dark, twisted circle of people around the Queen. How do we know that? How do we not know that? Lady Diana said as much and we didn't say she was batshit crazy, did we? Princess Diana seemed to be inferring that there was all sorts of people, you know, hiding in the wings and behind arasses and kind of, you know, whisperings and machinations and all that kind of... Do you know what I mean? I mean, I think, I think we pick and choose who we want to hear it from. And I think if Princess Diana says it, it's all well and good. Yeah, of course, it must be the truth. But if it's Prince Harry has said it, because he's done something that we don't agree with or that the media doesn't agree with, perhaps it is. I don't know, you, you know, all of that. Aaron Bullimore, maybe he was talking about Prince Harry, maybe, absolutely. Um, so yeah, Prince Harry's interview, chat, uh, comments about his nan are all over the press. Um, 
just going back to the Queen's birthday quickly, we're going to move on to um, Johnny Depp in a bit. Ooh, 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 I got hooked into that Johnny Depp stuff. Faith Goodman, coming to it. Um, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, the Queen is get to get her own Barbie doll to honour not her birthday, but her Platinum Jubilee. Yes, even the Queen is going to get a doll that when I was a boy, I used to squeeze the head of Barbie dolls and the foreheads would bulge out and the chins would bulge out. Who else squeezed? Barbie heads. That's what I want to know. Forget the fact that there's a Queenie one. There is a Queenie one. Look online. Queen's to get her own Barbie doll from Mattel uh, with an elegant ivory gown, blue ribbon adorned with decorations of order, making the figure instantly recognisable. And I have to say, I have to say, it looks remarkably like Queenie. Do go online. It's an honorary doll ahead of her 96th birthday. It's going to be sold, unsurprisingly, in Harrods, but also in Hamley's, John Lewis, Selfridges, and on Amazon. Yeah, costing £94, Faith. I was about to say, absolute snip not. Um, so there's, yeah, the Queen is to get her own Barbie doll. Um, take care, Dawn Clericots. Have a lovely day. Um, I just thought, I just wanted to share this. I just saw this story pop up. I don't know what anyone else thinks of it. Trans author burns J.K. Rowling alive in a horror novel based on killing radical feminists. Apparently there's a book you can buy on Amazon uh, which centres around killing trans-exclusionary radical feminists, including J.K. Rowling. Uh, it's called Manhunt, uh, and in it, it depicts the murder of J.K. Rowling, uh, burning alive in a Scottish castle at the hands of a transgender woman. I'm not entirely certain that anything J.K. Rowling said was about inciting death or violence, but this strikes me that this is inciting death and violence. Um, some have dubbed it as sickening. Um, uh, someone else said, the existence of this book proves that once again, misogyny is all right as long as you identify as a member of a certain group. Misogyny can happen, to, occurs towards women from all sectors. Such a shame, isn't it? It's such a shame that it has to get to this point. I mean, of course, you know, lots of people are very offended with J.K. Rowling and what she said. Take it up, debate it, talk about it. Um, this is, a, you know, this is an interesting point. Anne H says, J.K. Rowling isn't transphobic. She stands up for women. It's, it's intriguing. I do think an awful lot has got lost in translation with J.K. I really do. I think, I think... A lot, this is one of those cases where I think an awful lot more is, you know, like when back in the 80s, there was a film, The Last Temptation of Christ came out and uh, religious groups were, you know, I made a document, I was a student, we made a documentary about it. And all these religious groups saying, you mustn't see it, mustn't see it. And we were interviewing the religious groups outside the, the cinema and we were like, you know, why? And they were like, the depiction of Christ, it humanizes him. It suggests that he actually had dark thoughts of sex and living this life and da, 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 da. And then we said, but have you seen it? And they'd be like, no. And we're like, well, how do you know that this film is actually anti... How do you know? And I think an awful... Fair enough if you read everything that's been said and you come to that conclusion. But I think an awful lot of speculation is being made around this, in this debate around, around J.K. Rowling and what, around what a lot of people are saying. Uh, and, it, and it dampens down debate, discussion. And sometimes people just want clarity. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I just thought that was a, I thought that was a disturbing bit of news that I read there. Um, but let's get to Johnny Depp. Who's watched or is watching or has been watching the Johnny Depp? Uh, if you want to know where you can watch it live, uh, I was watching it on the NBC News YouTube channel live. Totally agree, Aaron. Perhaps TERFs shouldn't keep dubbing us all as rapists then. Our right to exist isn't a debate and our humanity isn't a debate either. Entirely, entirely agree. Entirely agree. Um, what do we think of uh, Faith Goodman? Watch Johnny Depp describing what happened on Amber's birthday. Totally shocking what she did to him and the taunting and shouting to try and get reaction. Then the poo on the bed, but she said it was a tiny dog. <sighs> now, in the title, I posted this on my Insta stories last night. I've never heard this word for a poo. And I know this isn't, this isn't the headline, but even Johnny Depp was finding this kind of amusing. The poo that was found on Johnny Depp's side of the bed uh, was uh, referred to as her, her, a grumpy, 
her grumpy. Have you ever, has anyone ever heard of Pooh referred to as a grumpy? Um, I know, obviously the nickname has become Amber Turd and all that kind of stuff. A grumpy. Well, this is, the, this is the, you know, clearly what's happened is Johnny Amber Heard case, he's brought a libel case against her. And it's really important to understand this because he's brought a case against Amber Heard that specifically pivots around an article uh, she wrote about, without name, that doesn't name him, about being the sort of, I don't know, the sort of poster girl almost for uh, victims of domestic abuse. Uh, and he's suing uh, because he's saying that this is, this single-handedly, this, this article uh, destroyed his prospects of returning to Pirates of the Caribbean and all that kind of stuff. What his defence attorney, so what his defence team obviously allowed to happen for the last 24 hours or the last two days is for Johnny Depp to share in great detail the entire backstory and context from his perspective, obviously, of what led to this article being published and then being in court essentially today. So what we've seen thus far is very much Johnny's unchallenged version of events. And to all intents and purposes, that's all we can react to. For the last 20 minutes of the, of the, uh, of the um, trial yesterday, I, 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 was so, I was so hooked on this. I was thinking of us doing a late night showbiz chat. And depending on how it goes today, I might, I might do one later tonight. Because it's just, it's so, it's so it, there's so many sort of conflicting emotions and thoughts and feelings going on. Um, he, does, he doesn't look well. He doesn't look, he doesn't look, he doesn't, um, he doesn't look happy. Um, so what this is, is him presenting his side of, his side of the argument. Uh, I've tried to watch the Steph Whelan, but Jet Depp takes so long to say anything, I forget where the sentence started. Well, yes, and yet interestingly, it's like Nadia said, what a remarkable grasp on dates he's got. For saying he sounds quite like, you know, sort of a member of the Rolling Stones, um, it's kind of, you know, he, he's, his brain is a bit shot by the opiates, the alcohol, the, the drugs and all that kind of shit and the rock and roll lifestyle. Suddenly it's like, yes, this came out at 4.30 on the 18th of December. I mean, pff, bloody hell. I mean, he knows his, he knows his date. Um, so he does look like a broken man. Um, so this is Johnny's version of events. And he went at great length to sort of say it. He did, it, it. You do have to have the patience of a saint. I mean, part of me wondered whether we should jump into it sort of half an hour later and watch it on double speed just to kind of get to the get to the number things um but if you were to just listen to his side of things um there is a compelling case there i felt and i didn't feel he was acting i felt that he presented i thought a really truthful and honest account and it was intriguing that as i as i was as I was listening to him, I was thinking, I believe everything he's saying. I really did. I thought, I believe everything he's saying. And yet, at the same time, sorry, I'm just trying to find this comment that someone, uh, 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 uh. but at the same time, I thought, when we hear what she has to say, I'm probably gonna believe everything she says too. Do you know what I mean? It's like you can have two terrible portraits of your own experiences, each one, that each one is true. Now, obviously they played tapes, they, you heard her shouting, they were obviously selected, edited clips. Um, I thought there was an interesting point where Johnny disputed whether the document, the article that was presented to him by, the, by, the, uh, by Amber's defense attorney, he was challenging whether this was actually the document that he was referring to. And I know that online, does anyone know this? Online, there's a lot of debate as to whether the document, the paper uh, article that she wrote, that he had put before him, is different to the original online version that was posted. Is that true? Is there, is there any merit in that? Um, put it this way, I, I was left thinking, you know, no one, you feel no one will win this. But, if, you know, if I was trying to be not diplomatic, I totally believed him. I've yet to hear her, you know, if I was in the jury, I'd be sitting there going, okay, th th this, you know, this is fair enough. I, I hear him, there's been sufficient evidence here, but, and this is where Amber Heard's uh, lawyer was on the money. He said, we're not here to discuss any of that. 
We're not here to discuss what led to this piece. We're only here, Johnny Depp, you've only brought her here to sue her about the fact that she libels you in this article. And I think this is where it's going to get really interesting. This is, going to, this is where it's going to get really, really interesting because Johnny Depp and his defence have a really valid point to say that she can't be referring to anyone else other than him in this article, but she doesn't name him. And I think there's something called jigsaw identity where you can identify the subject that people are referring to by aligning all other aspects of things. So I think that's the kind of defense, but it's gonna get interesting because I think, you know, Amber's team are gonna be very like, letter of the law is, you're going for this article. Um, you know, this, is, this, is, this isn't the case. He's trying to give all the context. So it's gonna be intriguing to see to what extent Amber Heard also takes us back because she's also going to take the stand too. Uh, but within the debate yesterday, we heard lots about his finger. Did anyone see the photos of his finger? It looked like it exploded at the end, didn't it? It looked like Herbert Lom's nose in the Pink Panther. It looked like a psh, it just gone like that. Faith Goodman on the phone saying he was hitting her, but he was in a different room. I mean, you heard from the, the it was, you know, the idea that she was an innocent bystander hasn't been proven yet. And this, I go back to this point, I go back to this point. It feels like, let's say that this was, an, and, and in even the statements that they agreed to sign where they sort of shared the responsibility, he didn't want her punished in the public realm for this, da 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 da, -da for the finger and all that. He kept that secret as much as he can. Um, why has he been disproportionately punished if the two of them were careering around their relationship in a sort of complex fog of drunken, you know, drink, drink and drugs. Do you know what I mean? And I think there's a valid point here that he's allowed to resurrect his career and to some extent clear his name, given the fact that they were both clearly at the epicenter of an entirely dysfunctional relationship. So I think there is a lot riding on this for Johnny. And I actually, when I watched it, I thought, thank God he only had 20 minutes with the cross-examination. It was a little bit like, my analogy with it was like with cricket. When you're doing well, but you lose a wicket towards the end of the day, you send in not a very good batsman as the night watchman, the, the, night, the night watchman. So someone who can go in, hold it, not lose another wicket. He's not a great batter, but you're not gonna lose another top flight batsman. Fortunately, he just did 20 minutes at the end, got a sense of where Amber Heard's counsel are gonna take him. And I think he's gonna be primed and ready to go today. So I think it's gonna be another sensational day uh, for the cross-examination today. He needs to keep his cool. He, he's, be, he's already being riled. I mean, the uh, Amber's uh, lawyer said to him four times, is that your name? And like Johnny said, for the fourth time, you've asked me, yes, you know, so. So anyway, did anyone else notice he's got a mallet finger like my mallet finger from where she exploded his finger with a bottle of vodka? But anyway, yes, and, also, and within all of it, within all of it, we discovered a new name for a poo, which is a grumpy, which is what we're going to call it in this household from now on. Where are you? He's doing a grumpy. Well, look, on that note, as I say, depending on what emerges, Reese, I may well be, we may well be back to discuss the Johnny Depp saga. Otherwise, have a lovely, lovely day. Stay safe. And, uh, oh yeah, I was going to discuss Alec Baldwin and Russ, but I'll probably save that for the weekly rushes tomorrow.